Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop, retired meteorologist with this Hurricane Ian update for Wednesday, September 28th. Hurricane Ian is poised to make landfall around the west central coast of Florida, south of Sarasota as a category five, almost category five hurricane, just shy of category five status with 155 mile per hour winds with gusts up to around 190 miles per hour. The storm has grown in size and strength overnight into this morning. Now, due to this increase, the base of the storm will cover a larger area and will be able to cross the Florida Peninsula overnight, maintaining its hurricane to near hurricane status as it enters into the western Atlantic Ocean around the coast of Cape Canaveral, Florida. From there, it will curve northward and move toward the Savannah River entrance as a strong tropical storm or low hurricane status. Due to all of this, a hurricane watch has been issued for all of the Georgia coast northward to the lower half of the South Carolina coast. Let's take a look. The radar this afternoon, this is about 3 o'clock, showed the eye of the storm moving on shore near Cape Coral, Florida, uh, south of the uh, Sarasota area right over here and uh, south of Tampa. But a lot of heavy rains and very strong winds continue to flow across that area and dump extremely heavy rains across uh, west central portions of Florida and also into central Florida, even some tornadoes over here on the east side of the storm around Palm Bay. Let's take a look at the velocity and the Doppler effect right over in this area here. There on the western side of the eye wall, uh, those winds out there are kicking in at about 122 knots to 130 knots. That's 150 miles per hour just about. And on the east, on the east side of the eye, right around Cape Coral, uh, those winds there are about 120 knots or 140 miles an hour. So yeah, it's an extremely dangerous storm. And we're getting some storm reports coming in, 106 mile an hour wind gusts over here uh, at um, uh, Salona. Let's move along and look at the uh, information from the National Hurricane Center. First of all, uh, if you go to my website, savannapat.name and click on the map here, it'll take you directly to the National Hurricane Center. Uh, and don't worry about 11, that storm is going to fizzle out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. But the uh, conditions for Ian shows that the storm uh, is moving onshore now into the central portions of the west coast of Florida as a major hurricane, almost category five hurricane, 155 mile per hour winds. It's expected to cross the peninsula of Florida, exit near Cape Canaveral as a strong tropical storm or perhaps even a minimal hurricane, and then move northward into uh, right around the entrance to the Savannah River area by uh, midday on Friday. And then by Friday night, moving inland uh, around the Hilton Head Bluffton area, Buford, South Carolina. Now, the because of all this, a hurricane watch is in effect for all of the um, well coast of Georgia, northeast Florida, and the southern half of the coast of South Carolina, with a tropical storm warning in effect for all of the coast of South Carolina into all of the coast of Georgia into northeast Florida. There's a hurricane warning in effect for the uh, mid coast of eastern Florida. Uh, as the storm moves offshore there. Looking at the global forecast model, the new data coming in from this afternoon shows uh, the storm moving across the peninsula of Florida over a uh, time it takes about a day for it to cross over and by sunrise on Friday should be exiting the coast just north of the Cape Canaveral, Florida area and then moving northward. Now you can see a large a plume of moisture and strong winds will be moving on shore into Georgia and South Carolina. As we advance in time, you can see extremely heavy rains, uh, blinding rains moving into the upper portions of southeastern Georgia all the way up into almost the central Savannah River area and all of southern South Carolina, Hilton, Buford, Bluffton, Hardyville, Ridgeland, all these areas, Hampton will be getting some extremely heavy rains and some very strong winds. Winds will be near hurricane force along the coast and in uh, well, certainly less than that inland, but very strong. We could see winds in excess of, uh, well, easily 39 miles per hour, but in some cases in excess of 55 miles per hour. And then as we move ahead in time, you can see the storm moves away. And by um, 12 Zulu or uh, sunrise basically on Saturday should be up uh, moving out of our area, but still some wraparound could give us some showers. Let's take a look at another model. This is the Navy 
uh, global environmental model. And uh, it's been doing a pretty good job. Now, this is from earlier this morning. It showed the storm again crossing the peninsula of Florida, basically the same thing as the GFS is showing, and then moving northward as a very intense tropical storm or even a weak hurricane. And it has it moving inland a little bit further northward. Um, another model I want to look at is the RGM, and uh, this shows the uh, winds very strong associated with this storm as it approaches our area and then moves off the uh, coast of Florida and up along just east of the coast of Georgia and moving into South Carolina and making its entrance right around the Savannah River entrance. What I want to show you more on this model is the uh, precipitation forecast, the amount of uh, cumulative total accumulation precipitation and looking at the model here you can see a tremendous amount of water moving in on shore uh, with this we're seeing uh, anywhere from well this is um, uh, four to five inches of rain here this yellow area is up to 12 inches of rain so as you can see a lot of moderate to heavy rains expected across uh, the eastern counties of uh, southeastern Georgia, particularly from the Ottawa River northward into southern South Carolina, and then all of South Carolina getting some heavy rains and heavy rains all the way up into the Savannah River, uh, central Savannah River area. So the, all this rain is going to make its, its way back into the river. So after the storm moves on through, you're going to see a lot of river flooding to be associated with it. So once again, going to my website, if you scroll down, to the radar section right there. Well, first of all, I have my local radar uh, here centered in the Savannah area coming out of the National Weather Service Charleston with the radar uh, just located north of Ridgeland, South Carolina. And there you can see some light rain already moving on shore, but I also have the wind barbs on here and that shows you the winds. And I'm seeing winds on St. Simon's now gusting up to 40 miles per hour already. And this is only Wednesday. Uh, so they're gonna see some very strong winds out there. Now, the other radar, I have it floating on the hurricane and now I have it centered on the uh, Tampa radar site, uh, National Weather Service Tampa. And there you can see the eye moving on shore around Cape Coral, Florida. And there you can see a tornado watch in effect for a large portion of Georgia. Now, with the center of the storm passing to the east of us, that will reduce our chances for tornadoes, but still we're expecting quite a bit of heavy rains and strong winds associated with this system. It appears the greatest threat to our area of southeastern Georgia and southern South Carolina will be Thursday evening through early Saturday morning. The greatest threat will be all day Friday into Friday night a prolonged period of heavy to extremely heavy rains with strong to damaging winds will most likely produce considerable tree damage in our area and particularly in the coastal counties and this will result in power outages and hazardous driving conditions also the storm will generate a strong fetch of easterly to southeasterly winds along the coast that'll be today through friday which will pump an additional three to five feet to the tide the morning high tides Thursday and Friday will be around 8 feet, but will be higher and possibly exceeding 11 to 13 feet, which will result in saltwater flooding over low-lying coastal roads and residential areas in those, are in those regions during those times. Flooding begins at around 9.5 feet. Along with the high tide, extremely heavy rains are expected. 4 to 8 inches in the upper portions of southeastern Georgia into South Carolina with pockets up to 12 inches. This will result in localized short-term floodings but will also lead to extensive river flooding in the following days. Continue to prepare for tropical storm or even hurricane conditions in our area. Start by putting your hurricane plan in place and closely monitor hurricane updates by tuning into your favorite local television station and other reliable news sources. And monitor your local emergency management and heed to their advice. Even though there is no evacuation orders given, those living along the islands should prepare for tidal flooding, particularly during the morning high tide cycles. Also, if you do live in an unsecure mobile home or dwelling, particularly in the coastal counties, make plans to seek shelter in a stronger structure. I will continue to monitor this storm and advise you to do the same. You can also find me on my website of savannapat.name or my Weather and Nature Facebook page and on Twitter at Pat of Savannah and on my YouTube Weather and Nature channel as 
Patrick Prokop. I have links to all of these in the description section below. It's also a good idea to start moving all those loose outdoor objects in your yards to a secure spot. And if you have pets, keep those pets inside or in a safe location. Thanks for watching and see you later here on YouTube.